Every project manager knows that you can't manage what you can't see. But how can you see everything? Project status reports offer a solution. They're comprehensive documents that give a snapshot of your overall project health. First, they outline where you stand compared to your plans. Then, they detail where you're headed next. Let's take a look at the benefits of a project status report and how to write one effectively. So, what are the benefits of creating regular status reports? Here are five. First, status reports boost visibility. They're timely, fact-based documents that communicate where your project stands at all times, thus guarding against surprises. Second, status reports help you monitor and measure progress. That's because they draw attention to your project milestones, enforce regular tracking, and provide routine updates. Third, status reports create accountability. Everyone knows what needs to be accomplished, who's responsible, and who's falling short of expectations. Fourth, status reports help you determine and analyze variances. Variances are measurable differences between your projected plan and your actual results. Finally, status reports identify corrective actions. More than simply documenting concerns, they focus on fixing them. So, how do you write an effective status report? Reports are split up into four sections. Let's take a look at what those sections are and what they include. The first section is the executive overview, which summarizes what the project is, what needs to get done, and how the team is performing. When writing this, you'll want to cover three things. First, list your identifiers, which are the project elements. They cover who's involved, what the project is called, and the date. Second, write a summary that answers three questions. What are your goals? What have you actually achieved? And what are the most relevant issues and risks? Third, describe the overall project health. Consider components like your timeline, scope, budget, and progress. And ask yourself, how are we doing? Then create a visual representation of that answer with color coding and percentages. So, what's next? After the executive overview, you'll need to dive into the specifics of what's happening. And that's covered in the last three sections. To start, the second section is for milestones and deliverables. This is where you track what's been achieved thus far. To do that, first list your milestones. Milestones are highly significant tasks or events that directly impact your success. Then, provide the completion percentage for each of those milestones. And finally, list each milestone's planned versus actual start and finish dates. Once you've listed out your goals, as well as the headway you're making towards them, your next step is to share where you might be veering off course. What are the current and potential shakeups to your project plan? In section three, update your readers on all issues, risks, and changes. Issues are current problems. Give an update on all previously mentioned problems and list new ones. Risks are problems that might impact your project. Alert readers about any high-risk areas and provide an overview of your risk management plan. Finally, considering all the mentioned issues, what are the next steps? Do you have any open change requests? If so, list them here. After addressing all current and potential setbacks, it's time to move on to the last section of your report, which should center around where you are and where you're going next. The last section of your report is called the Team Progress section. In this last section, focus on scheduled tasks. Write down everything your team estimated they could finish during the reporting period. Then, list how many of those tasks were actually completed. And finally, List all upcoming tasks. A project status report is a powerful communication tool. So remember to use these tips for writing effective status reports. That way, you'll have more successful projects.